Hello dear viewers, welcome to my channel Science Technology. In today's show, Computer Wednesday, we're going to talk about Fairphone number 6. So let's dive deep into it. So what exactly we are talking about? We are talking about a kind of new company. This company started to manufacture from Dutch uh, in 2013. Now be mindful, this company was not supposed to be a manufacturer. They were uh, trying to do basically a, a sort of PR work where they were trying to make sure that companies switch their practices from uh, conflict minerals to less conflict mineral, but it did not work out. And at some point they were like, you know what, I have to do a Thanos on it and we have to do it ourselves. And they, uh, their core value is basically, hopefully try your best to have zero conflict minerals basically uh, you should not exploit people to get uh, basically uh, titanium you should not exploit people to get uh, uh, tungsten or copper or cobalt things of that nature so that's their core value that's how they started now <clears throat> the core uh, essence is they try to be as fair as to everybody meaning they want to be fair to the user meaning user should not be like oh i i got stuck with this miners basically people who are actually uh, mining the materials and actually making the damn thing those should also not suffer and uh, so called earth also because again the design in such a way that it's not unnecessarily polluting so that's the whole point they try to be fair as possible now the first phone they uh, started was uh, shipped on january 2024 uh, they sold 60000 units which again if you know about smartphone even as early as 2013 uh, that's a, a lightweight sale but again it did give them an idea that uh, they can uh, become a company and can sell hardware and they almost maintained a two year cadence basically to so they are always maintaining a uh, two-year cadence. And again, it's not mathematically precise, but roughly that point. And now they have reached sixth variant. So this is what Fairphone is. Now, before you understand how a company works, you have to understand what they are trying to do. So they are uh, trying, aim is in the framework itself, as in like uh, the fair part. Uh, so they are making sure that if you are mining minerals for our devices, you are not being exploited. And again, they are doing their best. Same goes with uh, sourcing materials, working condition. They were basically, they started during the time when iPhone was just poofing people uh, in Foxconn factories. Uh, so they're like, no, 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 no. These people have to come in early morning and they have to leave in uh, late evening. They cannot be 24 into 7 into 365 from birth to death. That cannot be going on. So they are also making sure uh, to their control, basically as much control as they have, is like all the vendors, all the manufacturers, all the assemblers, they are following that uh, fair practice. And uh, to make sure, how do you reduce uh, penalty to the environment? Well, make it last longer because what's the better uh, carbon footprint than a mobile phone? Well, not buying a new mobile phone. So if your old mobile phone can keep lasting longer, let's say rather than just lasting two years, it lasts four years, that saves a lot of carbon footprint. So people are like, hey, what if we make the devices repairable and longer lasting fundamentally, not only in terms of hardware, but also in terms of software that could um, like, you know, have genuine impact where people are like, hey, instead of a uh, mobile phone being a thing that you just like consume it becomes something that you do not need to consume as frequently as possible and they are going to do their best to support uh, basically support the hardware and open ecosystem meaning they are actually working with some open source uh, foundations to get uh, software support because again eight years of software support is ooh, painful so they are doing that and e-waste reduction meaning each component is designed in such a way that they can disassemble it basically how iphone reached again iphone can reach that simply because it has a large scale that they can disassemble the whole iphone and get every part uh, uh, separated for efficient recycling they did the next best thing they could do and uh, e-waste reduction is the core essence now transparency and av advocacy because they do know that they are not huge company they are trying their best to be very transparent it's like why your phone is so expensive here's our uh, bong uh, basically bill of material and uh, advocacy basically they want to be in a scenario where all other companies switch eventually now let that be very clear this is completely different from uh, framework framework is focusing on modular and upgradable now like isn't this modular no they are not planning it to in a such a way where it's like oh uh, let's say framework you bought in 2020 and you're like hey this is cool i uh, let's say intel 15 uh, sorry intel 13th gen and you're cool with it happy with it but then you're like you know few year passes is like yeah i do wish more performance they're like okay switch from uh, intel to amd that can't happen here you can't go from like oh we started with mediatek now we go to snapdragon that does not happen it's not upgradable nor it's modulable meaning uh, you do not have the luxury of choosing oh like even though it looks like you have cameras on a ribbon it's not designed in such a way it's like hey uh, i do not want 50 megapixel i want something that has better low light performance you can't swap it it's not like a framework where you have like the ability to choose the ports you have 
So do not confuse those things. They are focusing on fair part rather than being modular and upgradable. They are completely different. So let's look into frame uh, four six, frame four six. So they launched in June uh, 2025. So it's their sixth attempt on this puppy and they have finally switched to OLED. And uh, again, it does make sense. OLED have reached a point where like, again, this OLED uh, that I'm using is not great. It's already starting to degrade here. But I think this is what, five years old at this point in time. So, but OLED that you can buy now, they last a very long time, like years. They do not have to worry about uh, burning and all that. And they are using LTPO OLEDs, uh, meaning the refresh rate also goes down, meaning the power consumption is drastically lower. Meaning if you are just watching a photo, it won't like, okay, we're gonna like, you know, clock up the higher frequency, no. It's like at 10 hertz, you are playing a game, it's like, okay, 120 hertz. So that's there and brightness is okay. It's 800 nits, which is good. Now, before this phone, they used a Snapdragon's uh, IoT chip. Now, IoT chip uh, is made for as an application, as in like appliance, meaning you buy it and you forget it. It's not a smartphone puppy. It's designed to be buy and forget. Uh, and how does uh, Snapdragon manage that? Well, they make sure the software is updated up to eight years. So that's the cool part. Then why don't everybody use it? It's very weak. It's not designed for like latest and greatest graphics extension or something like that. No, it's just like, hey, it's just a SOC. Just use it for your, let's say, a water pump. Uh, let's say you have water pump and you want to collect sensor data, use it for that. It's not, it's more of a microcontroller rather than like a full-fledged computer. Again, nothing bad. And it does have same core and performance as other smartphone. It's just that it's almost three to five years older. So. Not that great. This time they are like, okay, let's not go that old. And they switch to SM7635 Snapdragon 7th S, uh, third generation, four nanometer chip, I think. And uh, is that same as IoT? No, this time this is a smartphone. But again, they have sold enough unit or uh, Qualcomm was like in the good mood. They're like, okay, we're gonna support this chip for many years. And again, there are other, other manufacturers also, they use that chip. So chip has been upgraded decently this time. And they have micro SD card, which again, I really hate the fact that companies removed it because uh, you might think like, oh, 256 GB is enough. You you record video and you'll be like, yeah, that's 100% useless. You start uh, offloading, uh, sorry, uh, downloading YouTube videos. There is a download button, you download it or you download Netflix shows, you will run out of that space very quickly. And again, it's a very frustrating to me. It's like all my old phones had the ability to have giant SD cards they have not removed that that I'm, I'm very genuinely happy and they have actually tested it to two terabytes meaning you can use this puppy for long duration and uh, capacity is 256 gigabytes and 8 gb ram now as of now when i'm looking this i looked into their channel uh, website uh, the, as of now they are only offering this which is a very good design uh, that's the primary weakness of samsung samsung sometimes can smoke so much they have four ram variants on one soc it's like this phone uh, starting at this price but again for all the reviewers they give the flagship variant which has like eight gigs of ram uh, the cheapest one is two gigabytes then you have four gigabytes then you have six gigabytes and eight and you're like wait a minute that will be a nightmare to develop software for now you know why Samsung never reaches the polish that Apple can. You never want to make RAM as an optional option. So the fact that they are locking that down, that makes everybody's job easier. Wish more for it, but like uh, if you have eight and you only have eight, that makes everybody's life much better. And camera, they have uh, upgraded from uh, basically older systems to newer Sony sensors, uh, 50 megapixel, 13 megapixel. These are the rear cameras and uh, they have 32 megapixel selfie camera. Is the camera latest and greatest? It's good, but do not expect it to be like, whoa, it's good. It's not bad, but it's good. And uh, the one thing that they are flexing is five years of warranty. That's like dying. That's almost like commercial sector hardware. That's like dying. That's a very good thing. And uh, software support eight years, which damn, I am not sure how the heck you're gonna fit a future version of Android in eight gigabyte of RAM, but that would be very painful for the team uh, eight years later. It, they will curse us. It's like, why you had only eight? I mean, like, can you remember how many, uh, how much gigabyte we had eight years ago? Operating system itself will be bloated so much that like, yeah, eight GB is barely enough, so. That's there. And again, the uh, primary complaint was that it's repairable and all that, but it breaks too easily from water. So they have fixed that IP55. So it's mildly rainproof, not as uh, uh, solid, robust as a modern flagship smartphone, which can literally go dunk in a swimming pool, but better than nothing. And it has mill standards of 810H. Uh, 810H is basically latest iteration of 810. So price wise, it's expensive AF. Uh, so in USA, they're gonna bring it via some career, so to say, uh, it's gonna be $870, yikes. And uh, in Europe, it will be $535, yikes. In pounds, it's uh, $600, uh, sorry, 600 pounds. Yeah, it's gonna be expensive AF. 
so if you spend that kind of money in indian market you will be shocked how much better you can get this but again you will not get a fair device nor you will get a basically repairable device but everything else you can cook all of this better battery life better display better camera better everything so what exactly is the problem if the company is so old as in like a freaking 2013 why it's not as big as it could be well they have the same problem as frame of work laptops they do not have scale meaning to give you a context steam deck a valve company is comes up with the idea it's like we're gonna make a portable computer and it's gonna be a gaming console how much they sold they sold so far in 4 million units that's bonkersly huge for something that is like first of its kind that's like short of take money kind of whoa uh, compared to fairphone in all those years yeah it's a point of five a million it's not even one complete million it's half a million and let's not even compare this puppy to actual big daddies basically samsung and apple those puppies sell upwards of 220 million annually not in years as in one year they send that kind of thing so fundamentally um, they are not uh, doing so hot so to say even though they are old and uh, the one thing that bothered me is like they have way too many screws it's like the engineer kind of went cuckoo with her screws it's like dude you have more screws than g-shock and g-shock is more robust than your puppy it's like that is not good like i have no idea why the heck their back cover is two parts it's like it should be one part you had the design of one part in the last fish and you're like okay i do not want like you know nail to open it up no problem have four screws why you have two screws and five freaking screws on battery that's just dumb like fundamentally it has way too many screws and again that has a penalty and not only your manufacturing cost goes up uh, the threaded insert you have to put that will also cost all of those things assembly cost and it basically becomes unnecessarily expensive so that the part was like what the hell and again they were going in a good direction but it's like what if we have separated it's like what if you don't what if you don't separate it it's like dude that's not good so that's there and uh, fundamental problem that compared to framework is that they have no way of upcycling the product for example framework relies the idea that let's say they're making a laptop cool awesome gg you can upgrade it ultra gg but it has an issue that once you upgrade it you have a whole fledged motherboard what the hell are you going to do with that framework was like okay what if we design in such a way that it can work without battery and you can just use it as a desktop you can upcycle it, meaning once it's done as a primary laptop, you can use it as a desktop in many operations. You can have it uh, as a like you know seeding box, you can have it as a, a NAS, you can have it this or that. So many options are available because it can work without battery. And uh, this company, which is like fair, does not have that. I'm like, how the heck that happened? Because here's the deal. You must have, basically, if you want to, let's say, ever want to make a mobile phone company and you want to make sure that people can use the hardware, basically reduce, reuse, then recycle. You do not want like, oh, reduce and then directly recycle. That's stupid. So if you want uh, people to ever uh, able to use smartphones as something else than smartphone, because again, reduce you, your cell phone is lasting longer but again it will not last eight years it will be way too frustrating to use so at that point in time you have to recycle that's not a good idea there must be some second use why can't you do second use it does not have battery less mode what does that mean that simply means if you buy samsung's uh, commercial section i have linked the video down below they're basically active series they are designed so we work without battery now you're like, okay, why do you need to remove battery? Well, if you do not remove the battery, uh, the, you plug it in 24 hours. Let's say I was using this, uh, basically the old days, uh, using my Lenovo phone as a stream deck. And again, it worked. I was happy about it. But here's the problem with that. I kept using it and it started to swell up. Why does it swell up? Well, if you have a battery plugged in 24 into 7, it starts to do trickle charging, meaning it goes to 100% and then it does not drop. It constantly keeps it at 100%. Now, that's not an issue on day 1 or day 10. It's an issue if 3 months, 4 months, 5 months, it's a very big issue. So that's why for commercial section, they're like, no, no. If you are in a scenario where you want to use it just as a wired device, you have to remove the battery. So it has to be there because right now, if you want to use your smartphone as a dash cam, which again, it will beat almost any dash cam that you can buy from market, but you can't use it because it will blow itself simply because you have uh, plugged in 24 into 7, the battery will reach 100% and it'll stay there. It will create too much heat and kaput. So that's a very serious issue that like their products are not designed with upcycling or second use in mind. And again, Samsung is doing it. But bruh, come on, man. Come on. That's that's not acceptable. So what can they do? Well, uh, re redesigning the hardware is not viable, but they can have a firmware level solution for that. Samsung also has that option. I have linked the video down below where if they are using the tablet as a uh, dash, uh, basically console for uh, police cars, uh, they have a scenario where you plug in the adapter. But again, what if you do not want to remove the battery? It has an option. You select it, it lets the battery discharge. Let that be very clear. It lets the battery discharge. Right now, if you do this on any smartphone, it will not discharge. The battery will go and stay. 
you want battery to recharge basically goes to 100% no, or not 100% ideally you want to lock it at 90% it drops basically it does not change uh, the current path unless the battery drops to let's say 30% state of charge then it charges again so that cycling again it will reduce the lifespan of your cell but it will not swell up or go kaput so not having that option on a device that you are like okay it's fair it's like i get it reduce awesome recycle awesome but like reuse man like there are so many things you can do like you can use your smartphone as a wi-fi repeater so many will, people will love to do it they can't do it because if they did it will go kaput so that's the ironic part and again this has same mill standard as a basically fair phone and they have no screws battery can be so uh, battery can be hot swapped by the way so I was like, nah, bro, like this is not a good day where Samsung is like, bruh, this is not how you do it. That's like, nah, that's like, no. So that's the core problem with it. It's like they have nothing on the second layer where it's like, okay, you reduce it. Awesome. GG, you use it longer. What about after it's done? It's like, no, 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 you can use it for eight years. It's like, no, you can't. And anybody's like, no, I have been uting, utilizing my computer from 10,000 years. Yeah, you are cuckoo, but most people can't. So let that be very clear. Like I genuinely wish them uh, to introduce this sort of feature. Of course, have a giant red logo that says it's in 24 into 7 mode. I will battery will not be charged. Like have a giant logo there or isolate it if it's a normal system. But that will solve the problem as in reuse after it has uh, served its function. Like how people convert old computers into NAS or other things like router or things of this nature. So what can we expect in the future? Well, I do want them to succeed, but the, as of now, because again, their paperwork is completely transparent, they are reaching at like 0.5% uh, profit. That's a uh, low, that's like lol. That's like, it does not matter. And again, it's an issue given the fact that how old they are. So that's not that great. And again, this idea of thinking smartphone is an appliance, it's not. You want your washing machine to last eight years. You do not wish the same thing for your computers or servers. So fundamentally, it's that idea desire sounds good it's just that it's not practical and 8 gb ram will just fill up with the operating system bloat itself again it will not happen day one it will happen uh five years from now so fundamentally and there they have this approach which i do not get it's like they are like okay users should be able to do everything i'm like that's stupid don't try that don't expect users to do everything because again how many of you know that every Tom Dick and Harry can build a desktop computer which is much bigger much easier no risk anything and we have been doing it from 90s how many people can do that answer is very few again we live in the same eco chamber so we feel like oh everybody can do this no very few people can do that and you are expecting them to open up their smartphone it's like no so what can they do well ideally they will work with uh, basically mobile repair technician like how apple has a uh, technician shops where it's like okay uh, this is apple certified they can do it they can do it genuinely and again it also creates a economic benefit which again desirable i do not want to deal with like you know eight freaking screws and this and that but again a technician is like i got this i got this so you can give them it's like you got this you deal with it and again it will cost money but it will be negligible so that's a very, uh, what you call it, limiting approach that they have. Like, okay, user should be able to. I'm like, bro, no, no. And again, uh, they could look into upgradable hardware, basically how framework did. Basically, you can swap the motherboard to a newer one. Although doubtful, they could do it simply because their profit margin is not big enough to absorb that kind of impact. So that's there. And again, they have to plan what the hell you do after its smartphone life is over. Basically, you can convert it into, let's say, uh, basically smart home center console. You can use it as a Wi-Fi repeater. You can use it as a webcam as long as it has the ability to disable the battery. So they have to design those things. It's like, it sounds great, but it's like after five, six years, people will be like, bruh, it's too cumbersome to use. And again, nothing wrong with them. It's just that they're trying to convert smartphone instead of a computation device into a appliance, which is not. Now, again, old people will be fine, but uh, then you will have the same issue. It's like only 0.5% of profit. So I want them to succeed, but they have to fix their attitude. And this is like too many screws, like way too. And again, why it's a second part? It's like, it does not need to be. Bruh, you have more parts than freaking G-Shock. So that, that I do wish them, but again, again, they have to figure out how, what to do with battery. If they can have second life, a lot of people will use it. Like so many things can be done with more smartphone. We just don't do it because it goes kaput. And again, that's why Samsung in their flagship line, uh, sorry, commercial lineup always have that option. They had it from uh, basically the oldest, uh, basically advertisement I've seen is like a uh, Note Active 3, link to the video down below. So you get the point, like it's a desirable thing to have battery free operation. A lot of things can be done. So this was my presentation on basically Fairphone 6. 
Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me a disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.